welcome back if you're new here my name is Smita welcome to my channel today I'm going to be showing you a look for Durga Puja which is coming up pretty soon in the next month so without further ado let's jump straight into the tutorial and if you're new here please take a moment to subscribe you'll see new videos from me every Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes a bonus video on Sunday so I'm done prepping my skin well prepping my skin I just applied a moisturizer and now I'm going to be using a primer this is the professional from benefit cosmetics this is a pore filling primer so it's going to fill in all those pores and fine lines and make your skin really smooth before you apply anything else over it so I'm just taking a little bit and I'm going to focus in areas where I have the pores and fine lines a glam look today and for that I'm going to be using a full coverage foundation and the one that I'll be using is the Maybelline Super Stay and this is in the shade Golden. This is so full coverage that you don't need too much. All you need is a pump or two and I'm going to be applying it with a damp beauty sponge. It covers the dark circles in the spots so well and all I'm taking is very little. if you keep asking me if a primer is important now it really depends I don't use a primer all the time I use it when I want my uh, foundation to last longer so if I'm going for a run maybe to a store to buy something like a quick purchase or just meeting somebody for an hour I don't use a primer I definitely use a sunscreen though but not a primer a primer is needed when you want your foundation to last longer so almost think of it as a glue that sticks on to your foundation so when you apply the glue on your face first well I know that's a little bit of an exaggeration when you apply primer on your face it forms that sticky base so it holds on to the foundation for longer your foundation will not move so depending on how long you want your foundation to last, you can decide if you want to use a primer or not. So the foundation did a pretty good job. As you can see, it's covered most of my dark circles, but you can still see some patches. And for that, I'm going to be using a concealer so I can cover everything. This is the Milani concealer in the shade 145. I'm just going to be using it in areas where I have dark patches and I will also use this mostly for highlighting. So let's apply just a little bit. The darkest area in your dark circle is right in that inner corner so that's where you will need most of the concealer. So I'm just going to apply that there. I'm going to take a little bit more concealer and bring it all the way to the edge like of the nose uh, because this is where shadows are formed so if you don't apply a concealer there it will look deeper and um, it kind of looks odd. Let's go ahead and blend this. I'm, I'm just using my damp beauty sponge. Before the concealer starts creasing, especially under the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and set it with some powder. I'm going to be using the Master Fix by Maybelline. This, so I'm just taking a little bit with my beauty sponge. I'm going to be very lightly dabbing this and pushing the powder inside the concealer so it sets. Very, very lightly because otherwise you'll see that... Um, this will mix with the concealer and you'll see patches so you want to do it very lightly I forgot to mention is before pressing the powder in make sure there's no creasing from the concealer if the concealer is already settled in those fine lines take your sponge and press it in and remove the uh, creasing and then use the powder and then to set the rest of the face, I'm taking the Milani Press Powder in beige and I'm just going to um, use my powder puff to set my face. Now because we're going for a glam look, I decided to use some glitter on my lids. 
which means there is going to be fallout. Just to make sure my base doesn't get spoiled, I'm taking a little bit more of the loose powder with my powder puff and I'm just going to use it under my eyes. So in case there's any fallout, it can fall on the powder and we can dust it off later. I'm going to be using precisely my brows from Benefit. First filling in the sparse areas on top. I'm only going to fill in the sparse areas because I want my brows to look as natural as possible. They're already so thick. I don't want to add too much color. In fact, I want to tone it down a little bit. And I'll show you how to do it. So I'm taking the pencil. I'm just going to be filling in the sparse areas. Just that much. And then I'm going to take the spoolie side and I'm going to brush it upwards like this. And then you see that sparse area there, so I'm gonna fill that up. And anything else that I see. We have this, I'm taking the 3D brow tones again from Benefit in the shade four. So this is almost like a light brown mascara. And I'm going to use it to just brush my hair like this. And as you can see, it's toning down the color from a black to a brown. I'm using more concealer to clean up the lower border of my brows. And I'm going to use the concealer on my lids so I can even out the skin tone, see how different this color is from this. So I'm going to even out the skin tone and keep it ready for the eyeshadows that's coming up next. Once it looks smooth enough, I'm going to use some powder just to set above my crease just so blending becomes easier. For my eyes, I'm going to be using the Milani palette. This is the new Gilded palette and the shades are absolutely stunning. Next, I'm going to be taking the shade Entitled. That's going to be my transition shade. I'm taking it with my Sigma E40 blending brush and I'm going to blend that right in the crease. Next, I'm taking Lust with the same brush and I'm going to deepen up the crease further. See how I'm holding the brush? I'm not holding it like this. I'm almost flicking it up so I can create that depth there so it can be really precise right here. These eyeshadows are actually very pigmented so just make sure you take very little color at a time. Otherwise, it can become too patchy and blending becomes a nightmare. I'm just bringing it down to my outer corner as well. So I'm deepening the outer corner and the crease. Now I'm taking the same eyeshadow with a smaller blending brush from Doe Color. And I'm going to really focus in that crease. Because we want a very deep crease. So do you see how that forms an ombre from the deepest shade to the lightest shade? And that's the kind of transition that we want. And then it melts into the skin tone. So that's why you use a transition shade. Taking back my Sigma E40 blending brush, I'm going to use it just above my crease to make sure all the colors are very well blended. To brighten up the inner corner, I'm using this eyeshadow pencil from Wet n Wild in the shade Pixie. Next, I'm going to be creating a very soft cut crease and I'm taking the shade Solid Gold. And I'll try to apply it directly without spraying or spritzing my brush with a setting spray. It's applying pretty well and that's such a pretty color. Just a soft cut crease. And I'm going to blend it with the brown that's in the outer corner. You can stop at this. You don't need anything else on the lid. But I just want to glam it up today. So I'm going to be using some glitter. This is the NYX glitter. This is the gold one. Before I use the glitter, I'm going to be using a sticky base. I'm using the NYX Multitasker. I'm just going to take a little bit and dab it in the right in the center of the lid. 
I don't want too much glitter. I want more of a dispersed look. I don't like that concentrated, chunky glitter look. So I'm just taking a little bit of the multitasker and lightly dabbing it like this. And then I'm taking the glitter with the same dough color flat shader brush and lightly pressing it on my lids. I think that's good enough. I don't want too much. So that looks pretty and not chunky and just the way I like it. In my lower lash line, I'm going to first smoke out the shade Lust. Before I deepen it any further, I'm going to use a black eye pencil in my waterline. Of course, I'm going to be using the Jordana Easy Liner in black. Next, I'm taking a black eyeshadow. This is called Dark Side. I'm going to use this to set my waterline and I'm also going to extend it to my lower lash line. Eyeliner, I'm using the Oto liquid liner in black. I'm going to draw out a small wing, nothing too much. To prep my natural lashes for falsies, I'm going to curl it and apply a coat of mascara. For mascara, I'm going to be using the Big Shot Mascara from Maybelline. And for lashes, I'm going to be using Brazen from Black Label. Face makeup looks flawless. There's no dimension, there's no shadows under the cheekbones, uh, there's, it doesn't look warm. So to add those shadows and to give it some depth and dimension, I'm going to be contouring my face. And for that I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Powder Contour Kit. With my angled brush, I'm going to take the shade Fawn, which almost looks grey. I like that shade because shadows are usually gray and not brown. When you make it brown, it becomes more like a bronzer. So I like something with a gray undertone. So I'm just going to use this in the hollows of my cheekbones, in my jawline, just to add some structure to my face. Whether you're adding contour or highlight or any kind of color on your face, try to keep it as subtle as possible because all you want to do is enhance your natural features. You don't want to add an extra feature to your face. So keep it very subtle and make sure you blend out really well. Contour your nose. Start from here because that's where the shadow is formed. Go with your natural shadow line. Don't start from here. I see a lot of people drawing two lines from here and that looks odd. So make sure you start from here and drag it all the way down. And for blush, I'm going to be using Growth Flood from Colourpop. I'm going to be using Master Chrome from Maybelline. This is in the shade Molten Gold. I decided to go with something that's a deep red which has a blue undertone and not an orange undertone and for that I'm going to be using the Jordana Sweet Cream Matte Liquid Lip Color in Red Velvet Cake. Just so my makeup can last as long as possible I'm going to spritz some setting spray. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible.
trick that I follow in case I want a faux nose pin because I don't have a hole here to put a nose pin. I'm going to take some lash glue and I'm going to place it in the spot where I want that nose pin. So somewhere here. And then I'm going to place the bindi over that. You can place the bindi directly, but by placing it over the glue, it's double secured and it'll last you longer. I got rest of my jewelry on as well as sindoor. And here is the completed look. Let me know what you guys think by commenting below. And as always, if you enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That only encourages me to do more and more for you guys. And for your convenience, I'm listing all the products that I used in the description box right below this video. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new tutorial. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.